Hi, welcome to the very first lecture of ECO 101, Introduction to Microeconomics. On behalf of all the faculty members and the economics department, I welcome you to this course and wish you a wonderful semester ahead. Now, as this is our very first lecture, I want to mention how you should listen to this lecture and get the best out of these short videos. Firstly, note this, although there will be lecture slides to walk you through, I shall not repeat what's there on the slides, which means you should be very careful listening to what I say. In case you are falling behind, catching up to what I'm saying and what's there on the slide, you can always hit the pause button, read through the slide and then play the video again and listen to what I'm saying. I'm sure all of you are very smart and familiar with how to extract information from videos provided this is what we are doing these days on our phones and computers mostly. So I'm hoping this lectures will prove to be very efficient for the understanding of this course. Having said that, let us begin with this course. So if you go online and Google, you'll find thousands of definitions of what is economics and different teachers may also define it differently. But that's all right as long as we understand the main idea and the concept behind this word. So see it like this. We all have desires that is limitless to an extent, right? However, resources are limited and we have to satisfy our unlimited wants with this limited availability of resources. Now, this is where economics comes in. The study of economics is primarily concerned with the efficient allocation of limited resources. To satisfy our unlimited wants. Since we have unlimited wants and limited resources which we basically call scarcity and we'll be talking in detail about this in the later parts, we therefore have to make choices. Now economics is broadly divided into two parts as you can see on the slides macro and microeconomics. The prefix macro and micro actually comes from Greek words where macro means large and micro means small so as you understand your course eco 101 microeconomics will be dealing with the small aspects of economics that studies the behavior of individuals and farms in making decisions as you move on to further courses of economics you shall be dealing with macroeconomics which will be eco 102 but for now let us put our concentration in the course that we are referring to, which is microeconomics. So the first big question that we ask in economics is, how do choices end up determining what, how, and for whom goods and services get produced? So what determines whether we build better homes or develop sporting facilities? or should we produce more food or more retail services? I mean, how do these choices change over time? And how are they affected by the ongoing changes in technology that make an even wider array of goods and services available to us? So what economics helps us to analyze is basically what goods and services we should produce. If you carefully see this graph, it's a transition of UK's production of goods and services over the period of 1992 to 2003. So as UK progressed over these years towards development, they have shifted their production and service pattern as you can see in this graph, producing much more of computer services, market research and etc. that is of the blue shaded region and producing less of textile fibers needed goods that is of the red shaped region. So why these transitions and shifts happen and what goods and services we produce as we move along this transition? Economics actually helps us to understand this type of questions. Next is how we produce goods and services. We use the factors of production to almost produce any good and services that you can think of. Now, this is an important word, factors of production, in short, FOP. You should keep this in your head as you will be seeing this 
word repeated constantly throughout this course. So, the factors of production are made of land, labor, and entrepreneurship. This would make sense to you, right? I mean, look at land. Land is what we call our natural resource, and we need this at the very first to produce whatever we are wishing for. Second, labor. We need people to devote time and their energy to produce the goods and services that we desire, right? Without a labor's physical and mental effort, nothing is possible to be produced. And then we have capital. These are the tools, instruments and machines we need to produce something. Note, sometimes we say capital as money or bonds or shares in our everyday language. But note, those are financial capitals. And the capital we are talking about here are basically the tools and machines and instruments that we use for productive purposes only. And finally, at number four, we have entrepreneur. Imagine this, if there is no entrepreneur, then who will organize together the land, the labor, and the capital in the first place? So we need the entrepreneur to come up with the ideas of what and how to produce and make decisions and arrangements. So finally, all this together, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship makes the factors of production. In short, FOP. Now the question comes, who gets what? Which goods and services are entitled to people on their income levels? Further question arises from here is that, why is that distribution of income is unequal, right? Imagine why do women and minorities earn less than white males in the western part of our world? Also, why do Europeans earn more than Africans? And why do university graduates earn more than the people with only O levels or SSC? Well, economics helps us to answer this type of questions and whom goods and services should be produced. Now we come to the second big question of economics. That is, simply put, does self-interest reflect social interest? I mean, when you make decisions based on your own self-interest, can that be of social interest too? You can discover it for yourself. Take a minute and think. Much of what we do in pursuit of our self-interest does indeed reflect or further the social interest. Think it like this. Today, you take a rickshaw instead of your car or a bus to go somewhere. On the first place, you took this rickshaw because you find the weather to be lovely and hence the open rickshaw ride could be enjoyable, right? So it was your self-interest. But see this, provided you did not take your car out or a bus, you are contributing to less carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere, which means the environment is getting less damaged. And now what can you see? Your self-interest has brilliantly promoted a social interest. Like this, we do many things for our own desires and eventually others get benefited as a whole. However, there are also areas in which social interest and self-interest come into conflict. You'll discover that principles that helps economists to figure out when the social interest is being served and when it is not. And if so, then why, what might be done? Think it like this. People get jobs because some other person thinks they can earn, make a profit by hiring them or making them do work. And people accept a job only when they think the pay and other conditions are good enough. So the number of people with jobs is determined by the self-interest of employers and workers. But is the number of jobs also in the social interest? Like this, there are many other questions that we would seek the answer for. And economics helps us to answer this type of questions. Now, so far you have seen the definition of economics. And the questions that you have just reviewed tells you about the scope of economics. However, they don't tell you how we economists think about these questions and go about seeking answers to them. So let's see some common terms that 
will be widely be used throughout this course. You should take special care here remembering these terms as we will be using them in the following lectures and chapters of this course. And trust me, remembering them will really come handy whenever you are doing or taking any economics related course or projects in the future. So, kicking off with the very first term, trade-off. Okay, imagine this. You can spend the coming weekend studying for your upcoming quiz or you can just go and binge watch Netflix. The point is, you can't do both of these activities at the same time. You must choose how much time to devote to each. Whatever choice you make, you could have chosen something else instead, right? And this is what we call trade-off. Basically, giving up one thing to get something else. Next, opportunity cost. We all know there is no such thing as a free lunch, right? And apparently, it expresses the central idea of economics, that every choice involves a cost. Opportunity cost is the highest valued alternative for bond. Let's see an example to clear it up. So right now, you're watching and learning from this video, right? I mean, instead, you could have watched your favorite series that's just released online. So the opportunity cost of watching this Eco 101 video is the online series that you have foregone. Okay, now don't be sad now. Your online series is still there and you can watch it at a later time. But I hope you understood the concept behind the term opportunity cost, which is basically the highest valued alternative foregone. Next, we move on to margins. We sometimes also make choices at the margin, which is basically, say in the next one hour, you have to allocate your time between studying or text messaging your friends. But this time, the choice is not all or nothing. You can decide how much time or how many minutes you wish to allocate to each activity. To make this decision, you compare the benefit of a little bit over the time of your study with its cost and thus you make your choice at margin. Let's see an example to clear up things a bit. Suppose you study three nights a week and your overall grade is 70 percent, okay? But now you decide you need to increase your overall grade to say 80 percent. But for this you have to study one more night and make it four nights a week of studies. So that additional night of study will fetch you 80% overall rate. Now, if I ask you, what is the marginal benefit of the fourth night of study? Remember, the fourth night is your additional night. The answer is 10%. And then what about the cost here? We just saw benefit, which is 10% of the added rate. But what about the cost? Well, Instead of studying the added night, you could have spent doing whatever else you'd like to do. So that's basically the cost. In the following chapters of this course, you will be seeing many more examples and cases of margin analysis. So don't worry, we've got you covered. This is apparent at the very last slide of our lecture today. And the final term we'll be seeing for today is incentive. I'm sure you've heard this word somewhere. To explain this, let me give you one more example. Suppose your economics lecturer gives you some homework and tells you that all the questions that you'll be seeing in your homework will be on the next exam. So the marginal benefit from working these questions is large and therefore you carefully do your entire homework. In contrast, imagine your maths lecturer sets a homework and tells you none of the questions from this homework will come in the exam. So the marginal benefit of doing this homework is less. So you skip some of the questions from the homework. 
So the main idea of economics here is that we can predict how choices will change by looking at the changes in our incentives. So to sum it up, more of an activity is undertaken when its marginal cost falls or its marginal benefit rises. Vice versa, less of an activity is undertaken when its marginal cost rises or its marginal benefit falls. With this, I end the very first lecture of Eco 101 today. Once again, reminding you, you have looked into the questions of economics and how and why this subject allows us to answer many questions important to our lives. Also, we have learned a number of economic terms that we will be using in the following chapters of this course. I hope you had a good experience in this very first lecture. If not, don't worry, give it some time. Things will fall into its place. Alright then, goodbye now.